There are lots of ways to make your Outlook inbox more productive. And it's not just with your emails, it could be how you're viewing the emails and what other things you're seeing in your inbox view. I'll show you how to make changes to your Outlook inbox view today on Tuesday Tech Training. Hello, and welcome to today's Tuesday Tech Training. My name is Jennifer Stewart. I'm the owner of Gateway Productivity, and I'm a tech and productivity trainer. Today, I'll show you how to make changes in your Outlook inbox. A lot of people just go with whatever's already in there, and they don't know all the different productivity things that are available to you in the Outlook inbox view. You can pull in a view of your calendar. You can pull in your tasks. You can pull in your contacts. There's all different types of things that you can pull into your view, including different columns, and if you need to make the font a little bit bigger, you can do that. There are so many options available. It can be overwhelming once you find out where it is. So I'll walk you through the different options and you can decide what things resonate the most for you. As the default, this is usually the view that you'll see in Outlook. You will have your folder navigation on the left. You'll have your emails in the middle, and then you'll have these specific columns which you can change later. Let's start with the left-hand navigation with the folder view. If that's not something that you're using very often, you can create more room on your screen by using this tiny little arrow that says minimize the folder pane. When you click that, you can see that there's more area in the middle to view more columns if there's more information that you want to see. And speaking of more columns, Let's talk about how to add and take away columns. The easiest way to do this is to right click in the area of one of the columns. We're gonna right click and we're going to use the field chooser. Now you can see here if there are specific columns that you want to remove. Let's say I wanted to remove this one here that says the sort by icon. I'm going to remove that column and you can see it disappears. And some people might accidentally remove a column. You might accidentally click on something and it disappears. You can always go back to your field chooser and we'll move this so we can see it better. And so that was called the sort by icon. And here you can see there's that. It's just called icon in the list and I'm gonna put it back in case I made a mistake and I need that. Again, you right click you can either remove the column that you were clicking in, or you can use the field chooser to add a new one. So let's add a different one. Let's say we want the categories. We're going to bring that up. And in this case, I want to have it near the front. So I'm going to drop it right here. And the bonus to this is you can make these as large or as small as you want. I feel like the subject line is awfully large. So I'm going to shrink that one down. And then I can make more space for categories if I feel like I'm going to need that. A couple of other quick things that you can do with this right click are change what things are arranged by. You can also do that by clicking on the column header itself. So if I, instead of arranging by date, which is what it typically defaults to, I want to organize by who it's from. You can see now it's got all of my acuity scheduling together, all of my Asana together and so on. I can also change that if I want to bring the Z's to the top, I can click on from a second time and now it bumps all the things to the top at the end of the alphabet. And we'll scroll this up so you can see. So now Slack is at the beginning and Microsoft and the things at the end of the alphabet. So again, you can do this either with the column heading and we'll switch it back to when it was received or you can right click and arrange by do it this way. You can also reverse sort, which is going to bring, in this case, we're organizing by the receipt date. It'll bring the oldest to the top instead of the newest. Once we do that, it keeps us on the one that we had highlighted, which drops down to the bottom. You can see we're at the bottom of the screen now. If I go back to the top of the screen, there are my oldest emails. That's what reverse sort does. If you want to bring the folder pane back to where it was, you decide that you liked that, you can click the arrow again 
and click the pin to make sure that it stays. And you can see it shifts how it looks and now it's there permanently. A lot of people I talk to don't know how to navigate in Outlook using this folder pane. Not only do you have the folders that you've created at this very bottom section, which is sometimes a little bit bigger than this, you can navigate between your mail, your calendar, your contacts or people. And if you click the three dots, you'll have the tasks, notes, folders, and shortcuts. If you'd like that folder pane to be a little bit bigger, you can grab right here where it's got the double black arrow. You need to be on the line to get that. And you can open this up and you can see as you make this bigger, more information appears along the bottom. Looks like it won't pull in anything beyond tasks, but that's how you can get more of those icons to show at the bottom. And then lastly, if you need to rearrange those icons, let's say you're not really using the people piece of Outlook and you'd like to shrink this down and make more space, you can click the three dots, go to your navigation options, and this is where you can rearrange those different sections. If you don't want people to be there, you can move it all the way down so that it is at the very bottom. And you can put here how many icons you would like to be able to see. So let's say I want to actually see five of them. We will click OK. And now we can see if I open this up a little bit more, it'll go up to five icons. This is all customizable and most people don't realize it. Now I'll show you some other view options that are available to you. If you go to your top bar here and choose view, here are all of the options that you have. Let's actually start on the right and move to the left because the things on the right are a little bit easier to comprehend. Over here, we have our reminders window. If you accidentally closed out your reminders and you need to see what was there, you can always click this to view those again. And as you can see, I have none. If you need a second instance of Outlook open for some reason, you can open a new window. You can see that opens a second instance of Outlook. I've got two of them open at once. Close all items will close any open windows that you have. Moving to the layout section, you can choose to use tighter spacing if you want to be able to see more emails that are in your inbox. And you can toggle back and forth. You can see it goes much smaller. And then if I click it again, it'll go back to normal. With the folder pane options, this is what we did before, but you can do it here from this button. We can minimize it as we showed before. You can actually turn off the folder pane completely. And again, that's the section on the left-hand side. You can either have your favorite section at the top here, or you can turn it off. And then those options we saw earlier are where you can rearrange your different icons that are at the bottom of that folder pane. The reading pane is what a lot of people like. They might want to have it on the right or at the bottom. I personally choose to have mine off, but then there's a lot of other options available here. If you are someone who uses your preview a lot, but you don't want to make a message read just because you have it open in preview, this is where you can change those settings. And there are several other options that you can look at here and see if they're beneficial to you. The last option in the layout section is the to-do bar. This is where you can turn on calendar, people, or tasks, or have all of them off. And let's see what this looks like. When we turn on the calendar, you can see it gives a little preview of your calendar. Then you can also add people. So let's say I click on one of these emails and it's a person that's in my contact list, then it would show that person in here. And lastly, the tasks you can have in here as well. And you can have all three or just one or two, whatever combination works for you. So I'm someone who doesn't really use the people section as much, so then I can see more of my tasks. And here, you always have these little lines, these dividing lines, and you can make things as large or as small as you want. And here, if I had something scheduled today, I would see my little agenda right underneath the calendar. The next section to the left is the arrangement section. That's this big one right here. 
this really does the same thing that we were doing with the right click on the columns you can arrange by that's all these little pictures up here those are all the same it's just a different way to access it because they know that different people like different ways of seeing things and you can see the reverse sort is there adding columns is there you can see all those options the one thing that i'd like to point out is this message preview what this lets you do is change how much you're seeing on each of these lines. So right now I have it set to one line, but if I'd like to see more at a time, I can switch it to three lines. And here you can see it asks if we'd like to change it on just this folder, all mailboxes, or if we made a mistake, it'll let us cancel. So I'm going to choose to do it on this folder. Now you can see that there's more information here and some people like to do this more than they like that reading pane on the right side or the bottom. The next section is messages and this has to do with conversations. That's a whole nother video in and of itself, but just know that conversations is when you are emailing back and forth between you and one person or multiple people. It will group all of those together if you have this box checked to show as conversations. And that's typically the default and what most people are used to these days. So if we're emailing back and forth, it's keeping all of those grouped together rather than having each individual email. Not only do you have the option to keep those conversations on or turn them off, but there are additional conversation settings right here in this menu. The last section I wanna show you is the current view. This one can be a little bit more complicated, which is why I wanted to do it last. When you click on change view, it may have some built-in options for you or there may be nothing there. This is where it would save the different views that you can set. If there are already some views in there, you can choose manage views to see what those are, and then you can make changes as you see fit. What drives those views is this option here, the view settings. You can see that you can change just about anything on the screen. You can change the columns, which we've seen in a couple other different places. You can change what everything is grouped by. You can change the sort. And again, these are all things you can change at the column level in the arrangement section that we see here. It's just another way of doing it. This one gives you all of the options at once. Here, we could also set up a filter that's filtering for words, for other things, and then you can go as far as doing code, which I'm sure if you're like me, you would never use that. A really important one for people who have trouble seeing the text on the screen is this other settings. This is where the font lives. So if you want to see the font as bigger than eight point, which is what it defaults to, you can click on column font, and you can change that to whatever size you'd like. We'll change ours to 12 and I'll click OK. And then we'll do the row font separately. And I highly recommend you keep them all the same font. And then if you need a different kind of font, you can change it here, but that gets really specific. So we'll just leave it the way it is. We're changing both of those to 12. For our message preview, we can also make that a little bit bigger. I'm gonna make that 10. That is the little preview that's underneath the title or the subject line. And then here you can see there's a couple other options with the reading pane and some other options that you can look through. But the key is these column and row fonts and the sizes of those. Once I click OK, we're back to this place and there's really nothing else. The conditional formatting gets really detailed. Again, go ahead and play with these things. You can always put them back the way they were if it doesn't work right for you. And you can also format your columns here as well. So we're going to click OK and see what happens. So you can see those fonts all bumped up in size. That's something that a lot of my clients find very useful. So I would highly recommend, again, that's in your view settings and in your other settings section. And you can't change it right here. You have to click on the button to make those changes. If you're someone who has an email that flows through Microsoft or you're with a big company who uses an exchange server, you will probably see this additional section called focused inbox. What this does is Outlook is able to tell when certain newsletters and things are coming in. So if you have the focused inbox turned on, here's what you'll see at the top. 
you'll see focused and you'll see other. Now, in this case, I don't have anything coming in that it sees as an other. But what it's trying to do is pull in your most important emails into the focused inbox. And then you have your other one for you may have social media things coming in, or as I said, different kinds of newsletters. It just depends on what you have coming into your email. After you've taken some time to play around with the different settings that are available, choose your one or two favorites and go ahead and turn those on and see how you like them for a while. Don't overwhelm yourself by making lots of different changes at once. Do a little bit at a time so that you can see what's working and what's not, and then you can eventually get to your most productive view in Outlook. Have you had a light bulb moment from this training? If so, please tell me about it in the comments below. You can also put questions down there and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. You can also give the video a thumbs up or you can share it with someone who you think could benefit from the information. And be sure to subscribe by clicking the red button below. Once you do that, you'll see a bell icon and that will give you the option to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.